For sure Vent 2, I'll describe what it does, its components, how to assemble the device, the initial setup, how to adjust settings and how to troubleshoot it. The Shorevent 2 is a lightweight, disposable, pressure cycled, oxygen driven ventilator for pre-hospital use. We'll be carrying it in a major trauma pre-hospital pack and for ventilating patients following pre-hospital RSI, remote from vehicle mounted ventilators. Such missions may include pre-hospital road responses to trauma, winch missions, and some helicopter access patients where we land distant from the patient. The Shore Vent 2 consists of four parts. The specialised oxygen tubing with a screw adapter. There is a clip on the oxygen tubing which can be attached to a stretcher belt. The safety T piece which contains a Venturi sleeve to adjust fractional inspired oxygen between 100% and 65%. There's a safety pop-off valve at 55 centimetres of water. And there's a valve to allow spontaneously breathing patients to breathe if there were to be an oxygen supply failure. The modulator, which contains a pressure control knob and a rate control knob. The final component is a pressure manometer, which has a colour-coded dial and enables accurate titration of peak inspiratory pressure and PEEP. The device comes pre-assembled in its packaging. The first step is to cut the cable tie on the rate control and pressure control knob. After that, the oxygen tubing needs to can be connected to the device. It is worth knowing how each component fits together. The safety T-piece and modulator connect and finally the manometer is attached to the patient side of the circuit. The device is now ready to use. Once assembled, the device needs to be attached to oxygen running initially at 15 litres per minute and then to the patient circuit. The device is designed to ventilate the typical 70 kilogram patient straight out of the bag. At 15 litres of oxygen flow and 100% FiO2, the device will provide a peak inspiratory pressure of 24 centimetres of water and a respiratory rate of 12 breaths per minute. We will be monitoring the patient's chest rise, their end tidal CO2 and respirate as given by the monitor and the pressure as indicated on the pressure manometer on the shore vent too. There are several adjustments which can be made on the shore vent too. The FiO2 can be changed between 100% and 65% by adjusting the Venturi sleeve on the base of the safety T. This can be useful to conserve oxygen and when patients don't need 100% FiO2 to maintain adequate oxygenation. Changing the FiO2 will change other parameters. The peak inspiratory pressure is adjusted by turning the pressure control knob on the modulator. Typically, we would aim to keep the peak inspiratory pressure or PIP between 20 and 30 centimetres of water as indicated by the green and yellow coloured indicator dial. The PEEP, peak end expiratory pressure, is automatically set at 25% of the PIP, so that if the PIP is 24, the PEEP will be 6. Tidal volumes are not directly measured on the shore vent 2, but we use end tidal CO2 and the respiratory rate, as indicated on the patient monitor, to adjust our settings. If the end tidal CO2 is rising and we wish to increase minute ventilation, we can either increase PIP, increase respiratory rate, or both. The respiratory rate is affected by the oxygen flow rate set, the rate control knob, and the peak inspiratory pressure set. 
the respiratory rate is best adjusted by initially altering the flow rate at the oxygen source. The rate control knob on the modulator is best thought of as an adjustment for the IE ratio. The IE ratio can be roughly estimated by counting the duration of expiration and inspiration or by using the end tidal CO2 trace on the monitor with the end tidal CO2 waveform representing the duration of expiration and a space between representing inspiration. If we were to count inspiration to be 2 seconds and expiration to be 4 seconds then this will give a respiratory rate of 10 with an IE ratio of 1 to 2. The rate control knob is very sensitive and only small adjustments are needed. If the rate control knob is turned too far, ventilation can cease. Troubleshooting the shore vent too. If the flow is adjusted too low or the respiratory rate set too low, then ventilation can be inadvertently turned off. If this happens whilst adjusting the settings, then immediately increase the oxygen flow rate to 15 litres per minute and turn up the rate to establish ventilation and then readjust settings. This will usually fix the problem. If the pressure over limit safety pop-off valve is triggered, then the dial flicks back and forth rapidly. You should then immediately check for kinks or obstruction or patient factors such as tension in the thorax. If in doubt, return to self-inflating bag ventilation whilst troubleshooting. Basic operation. Assemble the device, connect it to oxygen running at 15 litres per minute, adjust FiO2 by turning Venturi sleeve, adjust peak inspiratory pressure by turning pressure control knob, Adjust respiratory rate by changing oxygen flow rate and IE ratio by turning the rate control knob. Monitor pressure, end tidal CO2 and respirate. Cut the cable tie and assemble the device. Connect to oxygen running at 15 litres per minute. Connect to the patient circuit. Adjust FiO2 by turning the Venturi sleeve. Adjust peak inspiratory pressure by turning the pressure control knob. Adjust respiratory rate by changing the oxygen flow rate. And finally, adjust the IE ratio by turning the rate control knob on the modulator to give the desired IE ratio. Continue to monitor ventilation using the pressure manometer, the end tidal CO2 waveform and the respiratory rate on the patient monitor.